you guys rep the, scr uh, the scrimmage on Saturday? I mean, were you able to kind of get all the guys? Pretty yeah, uh, it, it, it worked out okay. Um, wish you had more reps just because the number of quarterbacks you'd like to get reps, but it worked out okay. It was pretty good. Were you guys live to the ground with the backs in that scrimmage? Yes. Yep. So how yeah. much, when you can do that as an offense, I mean, especially like zone reads and things, how, how beneficial is that to, to have the, 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 the backs to the ground in a scrimmage situation? No, the quarterbacks aren't live, though. No, right? the quarterbacks. Yeah. Uh, well, it gives you a better it gives you a better look visually, just in terms of uh, what you might be capable of doing and what you might not be capable of doing, you know. Because when, when they're just tagging off, you're never sure what's going to happen, right? And then all of a sudden the guy gets whacked and he breaks the tackle. Well, that's point for us, so to speak, right? So What's the penalty if someone hits Adrian? Oh, no, I don't get too crazy. <laughs> they, they all kind of look at me like I'm going to get – it happens, you know. Um, so I don't get too upset about that. Yeah. What is but, but they're supposed to say all that, obviously. What jumped out then about the quarterbacks? I mean, if you had to look at kind of how they performed in, in kind of that big scrimmage, I mean, what jumped out uh, besides some of the obvious guys like Adrian? What jumped out on uh, the other guys, after yeah. looking at it on, on yeah. tape and all that business? It was a tough day for the Cubes, man, on Saturday. It was one of those sort of goofy days. I, I don't know why, but it, it, was just, it was just one of those days for us. And it didn't seem like we could ever get ourselves – uh, in rhythm, and that hasn't happened for a long time, just in my recollection. So it was just one of those days. Is that turnovers or is that just incompletions? Just uh, near misses, eyeballs, and just the holes. Like, what are we doing today? You know, it's just weird. Just one of those days. I don't, you know. So they bounced back really nicely today. So there was a lot, a lot more of what I expected. Do you, you kind of, with we talked to you so much about Adrian. Yeah. I'm guessing you, you portion just as much time to those backups and thinking oh. about them. Oh, and God, Developing yes. them. So, yes. so what, what have you talked to those guys about specifically? Like, what do you want to see Andrew get better at and Noah get better at and so on? Well, uh, for example, uh, Noah was just a matter of you know, he really has been in the offense a year, just like got a young room. So more con just being consistent. Right. Right? So he had a really a neat practice Wednesday, and then I thought maybe he got captured by aliens and there was some other Noah Vejo on Saturday. So okay. I, was, you know, I wasn't sure. Uh, so the consistency part of it. Um, for Andrew, um, it's just being having better vision, I guess, if you will, scanning the field. And being a little cleaner with, with that that part of it. Yeah. And for Matt Masker, it's just a matter of him just getting reps and feeling comfortable with the calls. Really, seriously. Um, Luke, uh, pretty much the same boat. Yeah, but he has those uh, issues that we're getting cleaned up with regard to his stroke. Gotcha. Right. So that and that's going really good right now. So he's feeling a lot more comfortable with that and generating more thrust on the ball. Do you, do you look at, let's assume that Adrian is your, your guy. Yeah. Do you look at there being a race for backup, or do you just like, we're going to take this into the fall and just see where it kind of falls? Well, we're going to see. By ear, or do you yeah. feel like you want to have some more clarity in the spring? I would like to have more clarity, whether that happens or not. We're, we'll, we'll just have to see. I, 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 I suspect that we will, but, um, you know, Coach Frost and I will talk. And he'll talk to the staff and the whole shoot match about that sort of thing, but um, that might go in the fall. How big of a deal was it that Andrew wanted to come back? Like, I'm sure that. How excited were you that he put his name in the portal and then he's like, I'm going to come back? I was fired up, man. I mean, he called me. Um, I think it was maybe the week, the week before um, we got back, and um, a week before that, a couple of coaches had called me, right? Yeah. And I talked to them about Andrew, and they wanted an evaluation. It was awesome. It was good. And then he called me the week later and said he was going to come back. So I was excited. Having a young guy like that around is just invaluable, you know, uh, just because of the type of person he is, number one. And number two, just in terms of the numbers for us, a guy who's, who's had reps in, in practice and in games. So it, it was good. This is way far out, but can yeah. you can you only tra do you only travel three quarterbacks, or do you like to, would you take four if you had four? Um, I mean, is that just hard to say at this point? It's hard to say. Yeah, um, 
we'll just have to see how it unfolds going into fall. Because that could be a pretty tough decision. If you yeah. Oh, absolutely. No doubt. No, no doubt, you know. And so we'll just see where that all kind of falls into place. How much of a difference does it make for Luke and his learning process to have three or four guys that have been been in the system for a long time? I mean, we talked about that oh, with, yeah. with Noah teach it, one guy teaching yeah. three last year. Yeah. Now it's sort of three yeah. or four. Teams. Yeah, because now they're, they're, they talk, you know, uh, after reps, they, they go back and they talk with each other about what they saw or didn't see or, hey, we got to do this, you got to do that. Might be footwork or something like that. So that, man, that's invaluable. But, and then just as important is just this whole, or, you know, the, the, the quarterback culture, just in terms of how they work, you know, and how hard they work and what's expected of them. Um, that's invaluable, you know. So for him, that's just tremendous. Now it's just not one guy. It's, it's four other guys doing it. Do you envision having a true number two, or does the redshirt rule and the sort of game considerations about when and where another quarterback might come in affect that conversation too much? I, I, I suspect that Coach Frost wants us to have a, num a true number two and a true number three and so on and so forth, and then pick our spots as we relate to that to that uh, uh, red shirt red shirt rule yeah. with the freshmen, you know, yeah. and how that all gets pieced together. Uh, I suspect we're going to be in tight ball game. So how that gets worked out with a young freshman who might go in and get some reps, we just have to see. Hey, you were in Iowa for a number of years. What do you think of yeah. Brett Hoiberg coming into Nebraska as a basketball coach? You know, to to be honest, I I, I didn't recognize that name at all. I, I didn't hear it in my brain until when it was coming here. So I apologize for that one. <laughs> You're too busy with football. The whole yeah. Time, you know. I'm, I'm like in a cave most of the time, yeah. So I don't know what's happening in the outside world more times than not. There could be a nuclear war. I'd have no idea. <laughs> in, the, in the cave, in that the one, submarine. You might know that one. Yeah, I might know that one, I guess, yeah.